What's going on everybody? My name is Tyler and today is day number 25 of my 32 straight days previewing the 32 NFL teams ahead of the 2020 NFL season. It's weird to say, but they've got seven more episodes after this one remaining in the series. And if you've liked this series thus far, leave a comment down below in the description. Uh, and then if you haven't watched the full series, if you missed a couple episodes, the link to the full playlist is down below in the description. Today's episode, I'll be looking at the New York Jets. Last season, it seemed like it, it was a tale of two seasons for the Jets. They started out 0-4. They won their first game week six against the Cowboys in 24-22. No one saw that one coming. People thought the Cowboys had lost had lost everything, yada, yada, yada. Then the Jets, they finish on a remarkable streak, 6-8 and eight to close the year. Or six, winning six of their last eight games, excuse me. Uh, finishing 7-9. But then again, in that final eight-week stretch, they lost to the Bengals in a 22-6 blowout. Mind you, the Bengals had two wins. That's right. One, two. All last season. And, uh, yeah, so it was really weird. It was a re- really weird season. And there's a lot of drama surrounding this team entering this year. First, you had Jamal Adams demanding a trade from the team. He got it. He was sent to Seattle. They got a good haul back, I will mind you, from uh, from the Seahawks. They got a couple first-round picks. Bradley McDougal, among other uh, compensation for Adams. But, I mean, Adams is one of the top players at his position. Young guy. Was, all they had to do was pay him. That's basically all they had to do, and they refused. Then you got Adam Gase, who's on the hot seat as their head coach, and he has been criticized for creating a rift, basically, in this locker room between the players and the coaching staff, and that rift probably started with Adams, as well as the Jets star running back, Le'Veon Bell, who last season didn't perform well at all, um, by his standards at least, got paid a lot of money, there were rumors of him being traded, the J- Gase reportedly did not, does not like Le'Veon Bell, like as a player or whatnot, from what I've read, they brought in Frank Gore, who Gase has a lot of respect for, coached for in the past, so I'm sure that Gore will see a lot more touches than people probably project. I won't be on it. I'm not going to lie. And then there's also Sam Darnold entering his third season in the NFL, a quarterback, underperformed, frankly, given the fact he was a third overall pick through two years, and given the fact that the Jets could have had someone like a, I don't know, a Josh Allen at quarterback who they passed on the bills traded up to get and look in their own division the bills are thriving with josh allen and sam darnold there's questions here i wouldn't be surprised the jets finish poorly and they move on from darnold similar to what the bears might be doing with mitchell trubisky just, just it sucks because sam darnold is an immense talent i just think he is not right for this new york market it takes a certain type of player we saw eli manning for the giants do it for over a decade a decade and a half basically because he drafted in 2004 Sure, there was a couple ups and downs there, but he won the team two Super Bowls, was a staple for the team, and no one was ever really mad at Eli Manning. Sam Darnold, through two seasons, I don't think he's cut out for this. He's, I think he needs to go to a new place. That's just me. Then, there's the defense, uh, the draft this past year. Almost forgot that. It, the Jets drafted Makai Becton, the 11th overall pick in the 2020 draft. Immense talent out of Louisville, offensive tackle, but there were... Some other guys available that the Jets could have easily gotten. They could have gotten Tristan Wirfs, who was a freak of nature. People thought he could go as high as the number four overall pick. Slid all the way down to the Buccaneers. I believe it was like 13. They also could have drafted a wide receiver. The Jets surely need one. They lost uh, Robbie Anderson in free agency. James and Crowder, clearly not a number one receiver. They got Denzel Mims late in the draft, but uh, I really am not too sure about that. But they passed on guys like Jerry Judy, CeeDee Lamb, among others. So... What direction is here? It's not. It's like the Jets are not even going to give Sam Darnold a chance. Chris Herndon showed some glimpses last season at tight end, but I'm not too confident in him to being a lead leading tight end in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And then there's the defense. Questionable at best. C.J. Mosley underperformed last season in his first year. They had the whole Anthony Barr fiasco uh, entering last offseason. They really didn't sign anyone this offseason. Quinn and Williams, in his rookie season, left a lot to be desired. And although they did allow the second fewest rushing yards per game, their pass defense was anemic. Bottom half of the NFL, and they play in the division, mind you, with the Bills and Josh Allen, who could sling it. The Dolphins, who have a solid wide receiving group with Devontae Adams and Preston Williams and Mike Gesicki at tight end. And then the Patriots, who are the Patriots. So I am a little concerned about this Jets team. And it, it's going to be on Gase not to sour any more relationships on his team for his sake in terms of his job and for the sake of the team's success. Because let's be real here. It's going to be a rough year for Jets fans. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm a Giants fan, and I know it's going to be rough for Giants team for the Giants. J- 
Jets ain't going to be much better. Actually, I think it's going to be worse. Looking at the full Jets schedule, which will be down below in the description, I have the Jets losing their first eight games of the season. And they probably could lose their first ten. I'll be totally honest. But I'm, I was generous. I gave them only their first eight. I have them losing to the Bills week one. Losing to the San Francisco 49ers week two. Losing at Indianapolis week three. Versus the Broncos week four. Versus the Cardinals week five. At the Chargers week six. Versus the Bills week seven. At the Kansas City Chiefs week eight. Oh, and eight. Eight straight losses to start the season. And then they take on the Patriots week nine at home. And I'm not even sure if they can win that game. I just was feeling generous when I was doing my win-loss projections, to be totally honest. The Patriots are going to probably win this game big time week nine. But I have the Jets winning this one just to be nice. So they can start, go one and eight. They'll finish their first half of the season, weeks 10, weeks one through 10, one and nine, losing to the Dolphins week 10. They have their bye week, week 11. I'm sure Gase will be out the door. They will probably be Joe Flacco coming in at quarterback, replacing Sam Darnold because they signed Joe Flacco in the offseason. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not even a Jets fan and I'm ranting about this. That's just how bad the Jets are as an organization. I also didn't mention, by the way, their owner is in like some legal battles while he was serving as the head like the head of the State Department or whatever for the UK. Or he was a US ambassador for the UK with all these uh, sexual misconduct violations toward women. Uh, it, it's just insane. Read about that on your free time after you watch this video. Um, looking at the, sex, J the Jets' second half of the season, excuse me for that slip up, uh, I have them winning their first game after the bye week, week 10, or week 12, excuse me, first the Dolphins. Then they finish their season losing their final five games, week 13 against the Raiders, week 14 against the Seahawks, week 15 against the Rams, week 16 versus the Browns, week 17 versus the Patriots. That week 14 matchup, mind you. Jamal Adams' his first game against the Jets, if he's healthy and playing, watch out. He is going to come out swinging. Because he knows his whole defense. Greg Williams is still the defensive quarter for the Jets, if I'm not mistaken. Probably going to use a lot of the same defense. Pro and, Jet and Adams practice against that offense. So Adams will have a big game. Seahawks will win big that one. I'm calling right now. So overall, the Jets go 2-14. Tied for the worst record in the entire NFL thus far with the Las Vegas Raiders. And I believe that's my lowest projection. Uh, for any team, because I've written all these scripts thus far for this whole series, just in case you guys wanted to know. That's just me. Came prepared. Um, so yeah, two and fourteen. The Jets will probably end up with the top draft pick, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go for someone like a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields at quarterback to be the replacement to Sam Darnold. Boy, oh boy, if the Jets got Trevor Lawrence, I mean, I, I as a Syracuse student, go Orange. I've watched Trevor Lawrence now for three seasons. Uh, the guy is a beast. Uh, it's insane. All right, now I guess it's now be two seasons because he was a freshman in our freshman year. Yeah, I'm the same age as Trevor Lawrence. Um, that makes me feel good about myself. Trevor Lawrence, by the way, if you want to come on the show or be, be in a video, uh, hit me up. That's all I'm going to say. Shameless plug. All right, five games I'm most looking excited for, for the Jets this season. I mean, there aren't many. It's, it's hard to find. Week one versus the Bills. I think this is just to be a nice way to see where the Jets stand against the presumptive top dogs in this division this year. Um, the Bills, I mean, if the Jets perform well and they don't show like they're going to stink all year, maybe they could perform. I don't think they'll win this game at all, but if a strong showing here could definitely raise the expectations of most Jets fans and members of the media. Week 9 versus the Patriots, this is a game I had the Jets winning, so... Who knows there? I mean, the pa Jets and Patriots always seem to play. The, the game seemed to feel a little bit different, at least in the early 2010s. Late, last couple years, they haven't been the same. Week 12 versus the Dolphins. This is another game. I have the Jets winning this one coming out of the bye. It'll be interesting to see if the Jets make any changes during the bye week in terms of their, their roster or their coaching staff, what happens for the remainder of the season. And this would be a nice start against a team that the Jets will be probably competing for in the future, competing with, excuse me, in the future. Week 13 against the Raiders. Um, I mean, the Raiders look to be sucky. This game could decide the number one overall pick this year. And this most likely will be it, given the fact that I have the Jets losing to this one. So 2-14, and 14, if both teams finish at that mark, uh, the Jets will get the first overall pick. So, Jets fans, you're welcome. Week 16 versus the Browns. Last year, OBJ had a monster game against the Jets in New York. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, does it again here. Um... And this is also what like what could have been. 
because there were rumors entering the 2018 draft that the Jets wanted to draft Baker Mayfield with the number three overall pick. They thought that the Browns, they were going to take someone like a Sam Darnold or a Saquon Barkley. They ended up going Baker Mayfield, and the rest is history. Baker, although not as much success, he's had definitely more success than uh, Sam Darnold so far in their young career. So this is almost like a what could have been moment for them. But let me know what y'all think down below in the description. I know I went kind of on a rant there, kind of a tangent about the Jets, but that's just what the Jets are this year. So let me know your thoughts down below. Where do you think the Jets will stack up here in 2020? Thank y'all so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, tomorrow, we'll talk about the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that I think will be a lot better than the Jets. So thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.